Hey, hey, in this video, we'll be looking at how to create a data table by filtering date range from another table in rows. Let's dive right in. Let's consider having a data table with a date column along with a bunch of other metrics here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new table and add a date range input element here, which you can find from under our insert menu like so, date picker and date range. I'm gonna go ahead and expand this a little bit and temporarily add a date range as well, let's say from 1st to 16th. Now, before we could use the actual filter function itself, we'd need the individual dates, which is the start date and end date independently. And to get that, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use our slice function and the text is sitting in cell B1. I'm going to use the semicolon as the delimiter and use first position to get the data out, which would just give us the start date in this format. I'm gonna copy this formula, paste it in cell D1, and instead of one, I'm gonna choose the position to be two, which will give us the end date. Now, we also need to get rid of the open and close square brackets, and to do that, I'm gonna use the substitute function, where in this case, I'm using original text to be sitting in cell B1. You search for the open square brackets and replace this with nothing, which is empty space. I'm gonna copy this function, paste it right here, just that instead of open square brackets, I'm gonna use the close square bracket symbol like so. And once we have this, the final thing I'm gonna do is change this or rather convert this into the date format. And again, the value in this case is setting in cell C2. So I'm just gonna do that and copy this formula and paste that in here. And finally, once we have this information, I'm going to use our filter function and in this case, the date range I'm gonna choose is from A to I from the Google Analytics 4 table. And the filter conditions, I'm gonna use two conditions, which is that the date needs to be greater than equal to the start date and less than equal to the end date. So those are two conditions that we need to add, which we can do by opening parentheses here. And in this case, the date column greater than equal to the one sitting in cell C3, close the parentheses, and which is the asterisk symbol, open parentheses again, select date column, less than equal to the end date, which is sitting in cell D3, close brackets, hit enter. And let's see what data shows up here. So you'll see that there are like about 17 data points, which is like 16 plus one, because that's the date range that we have chosen. As next steps, we'll be essentially merging or nesting these functions one inside the other. So let's start with the very top. So from C1, I'm gonna copy this function, paste it here. I'm gonna do the same thing with D1, paste that in here. I'm gonna take this substitute function and paste that here doing the same thing from column D as well, paste that in here. And doing this, I can just remove these functions. Finally, I'm gonna take this, which is in C3, and put that inside this formula that we've got going here, along with the one in D3, paste that in here. Once that's done, I can delete these as well. And now we just have everything inside a single function, like so. And once we have this, we can click on the drop down and convert the entire thing to a data table, like so. And there we have it. Just to clean this up a little bit, I'm gonna go ahead and delete these rows, additional rows and all these columns as well. And I'm also going to hide the grid lines just to see how this looks like when we view it in the view mode. I'm also gonna hide the main table in the view mode just so it becomes a little bit more tidier. So now if I go switch to the view mode, you can, let's say, change these data points. Let's say in August from one to eight, you do that, you'd only get that information. In July, let's say one to 31, and you'll only get July data here. So, and that's how you can create a new filter table inside rows. I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.